does it give you any inclination or hope about how difficult it is to engineer common sense reasoning? So how complicated this, is this whole process? So looking at the brain, is this a marvel of engineering or is it pretty dumb stuff stacked on top of each other over and co- <laughs> it can a pretty be both. extensive can it, can copy it be both? Can, can it be both, right? I don't know if it can be bo- both because uh, if it's an incredible engineering job, that means it's very, so evolution did a lot of work. It uh, Yeah, but then, but then it just copied that, right? So as I said earlier, the figuring out how to model something like a space is really hard. And evolution had to go through a lot of trick. And these, these, these cells I was talking about, these grid cells and play cells, they're really complicated. This is not simple stuff. This, this neural tissue works on these really unexpected, weird mechanisms. Um, but it did it. It figured it out. But, but now you could just make lots of copies of it. Right? But, the, but then finding, yeah, so it's a, it's a very interesting idea that it's a lot of copies of a basic mini brain. But the question is, how difficult it is to find that mini brain that you can copy and paste uh, effectively. Well, like we, it, today we know enough to build this. I'm sitting here with, you know, I, I know the steps we have to go. There's still, still some engineering problems to solve, but we know enough. And this is not like, oh, this is an interesting idea. We have to go think about it for another few decades. No, we actually understand it pretty well details. So not all the details, but most of them. So it's complicated. But it is an engineering problem. So in my company, we are working on that. We are basically laid out a roadmap, how we do this. Um, it's not going to take decades. It's a matter of a few years, um, optimistically, but I think that's possible. Um, it's, you know, complex things. If you understand them, you can build them. So in which domain do you think it's best to build them? Are we talking about robotics, like... Uh, entities that operate in the physical world that are able to interact with that world? Are we talking about entities that operate in the digital world? Are we talking about something more like, uh, more specific, like is done in the uh, machine learning community where you look at natural language or computer vision? Where do you think is easiest to- It's the first first two more than the third one, I would say. Um, again, Again, let's just use computers as an analogy. Um, the pioneers in computing, people like John Van Neumann, Alan, Alan Turing, they created this thing, you know, we now call the universal Turing machine, which is a computer, right? Did they know how it was going to be applied, where it was going to be used? You know, could they envision any of the future? No. They just said, this is like a really interesting computational idea about algorithms and how you can implement them in, in a machine. And we're doing something similar to that today. Like we are we are building this sort of universal learning principle that can be applied to many, many different things. But the the robotics piece of that, oh, okay. the, the interactive Okay, elements. all right, let's, let's be just specific. You can think of this cortical column as a, what we call a sensory motor learning system. It has the idea that there's a sensor and then it's moving. That sensor can be physical. It could be like my finger and it's moving in the world. It could be like my eye and it's physically moving. It can also be virtual. So it could be, um, an example would be I could have a, a, a system that lives in the internet that that actually samples information on the internet and moves by following links. That's mm-hmm. that's a sensory motor system. So <laughs> something that echoes the the process of a finger moving along a, co- a coffee but, cup. But in a very very loose sense, it's it's like again, learning is inherently about discovering the structure in the world and to discover the structure in the world. You have to move through the world, mm-hmm. even if it's a virtual world, even if it's a conceptual world. You have to move through it. You don't, it doesn't exist in one, it has some structure to it. Mm. So here's here's a couple of predictions that getting what you're talking about. In humans, the same algorithm is does robotics, right? It moves my arms, my eyes, my body, right? Um, and so in my in the future, to me, robotics and AI will merge. They're not gonna be separate fields because they're gonna the the the, the, the algorithms for really controlling robots are gonna be the same algorithms we have in our brain that brain at these sensory motor algorithms. I today we're not there, but I think that's gonna happen. And um and then so but not all AI systems will have be robotics. Um you can have systems that have very different types of embodiments. Some will have physical movements, some will have not have physical movements. It's a very generic learning system. 
again, it's like computers. The Turing machine is, is like, it doesn't say how it's supposed to be implemented. It doesn't tell you how big it is. It doesn't tell you what you can apply it to, but it's, an inter- it's a computational principle. Cortical column equivalent is a computational principle it's about learning. Mm-hmm. It's about how you learn, and it can be applied to a gazillion things. This is what I think this is, I think this impact of AI is going to be as large, if not larger, than computing has been in the last century, by far, because it's a, it's getting at a fundamental thing. It's not a vision system or a learning system. It's a it, it's not a vision system or a hearing system. It is a learning system. It's a fundamental principle, how you learn the structure in the world, how you can gain knowledge and be intelligent. And that's what the Thousand Brains says was going on. And we have a particular implementation in our head, but it doesn't have to be like that at all. Do you think there's going to be some kind of impact Okay, let me ask it another way. What do uh, increasingly intelligent AI systems do with us humans in the following way? Like, how hard is the human in the loop problem? How hard is it to interact? The finger on the coffee cup equivalent of having a conversation with a human being. So how hard is it to fit into our little human world? Uh, I don't, I think it's a lot of engineering problems. I don't think it's, a fundamental problem. Okay. I could ask you the same question. How hard is it for computers to fit into a human world? Right. That, I mean, that's essentially what I'm asking. Like, how um, much are we uh, elitist? Are we as humans? Like, we try to keep out uh, systems. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. I think that I'm not sure that's the right question. Let's, let's look at computers as an analogy. Mm-hmm. Computers are a million times faster than us. They do things we can't understand. Most people have no idea what's going on when they use computers, mm-hmm. right? How, they, how we integrate them in our society? Um, well, they're, they, we don't think of them as their own entity. They're not, they're not living things. Um, we don't afford them rights. Um, we, uh, we rely on them. Our survival as a 7 billion people or something like that is relying on computers now. Um, Don't you think that's a fundamental problem that we see them as something we can't, we don't give rights to? So computers. Like, so yeah, computers. So uh, robots, computers, intelligent systems. It feels like for them to operate successfully, they would need to have a lot of the elements that we would start having to think about. Like, should this entity have rights? I, I don't think so. I I think it's tempting to think that way. First of all, I don't think anyone, hardly anyone thinks that for computers today. No one says, oh, this thing needs a right. I shouldn't be able to turn it off. Or, you know, if I throw it in the trash can, you know, and hit it with a sledgehammer, I might might form a criminal act. No, no one thinks that. Um, And now we think about intelligent machines, which is where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, And and all, all of a sudden, we're like, well, no, we can't do that. I think the basic problem we have here is that people think intelligent machines will be like us. They're going to have the same emotions as we do, the same feelings as we do. What if I can build an intelligent machine that have absolutely could care less about whether it was on or off or destroyed or not? It just doesn't care. It's just like a map. It's just a modeling system. It has no desires to live, nothing. Is it possible to create a system that can model the world deeply and not care about yeah. whether, whether it lives or dies? Absolutely. No question about it. To me, that's not 100% obvious. It's, it's obvious to me. So okay. we, can, we can debate it if you want. <laughs> yeah. where, does your, where does your desire to live come from? It's an old evolutionary yeah. design. I mean, we could argue, does it really matter if we live or not? Objectively, no, right? We're all gonna die eventually. Yeah. Um, but evolution makes us wanna live. Evolution makes us wanna fight to live. Evolution just wanna care and love one another. And to care for our children and our and our relatives and our family and 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 so on, and those are all good things, um, but they come about not because we're smart, because we're animals that grew up. You know, the the hummingbird in my backyard cares about its offspring. You know, the every living thing in some sense cares about you know surviving. Mm-hmm. But when we talk about creating intelligent machines, we're not creating life. We're not creating evolving creatures. We're not creating living things. We're just creating a machine that can learn really sophisticated stuff. And that machine, it may even be able to talk to us, mm-hmm. but it does not it's not gonna have a desire to live unless somehow we put it into that system. Well, there's learning, right? The, the thing is- But you don't learn to li- wanna live. That's built into you. It's, well, it's part of your so DNA. P- people like Ernest Becker argue, so, okay. Uh, there's the fact of finiteness of life. The way we think about it is something we learn. 
uh, perhaps. So, okay. Yeah, and the, some people decide they don't want to live. And some people decide, you know, you can, but the desire to live is built in DNA, right? But I think uh, what I'm trying to get to is uh, in order to accomplish goals, it's useful to have the urgency of mortality. This is what the Stoics talked about, is meditating in your mortality. Yeah. It might be a very useful thing to do to die and have the urgency of death and to realize that to uh, conceive yourself as an entity that operates in this world that eventually will no longer be a part of this world and actually conceive of yourself as a conscious entity might be very useful for you to be a system that makes sense of the world. Otherwise you might get lazy. <laughs> well, okay. We're gonna build these machines, right? And so we're talking about building AIs. What, but we're, we're building the, um, uh, the 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 equivalent of the cortical columns, the uh, the neocortex, the, the neocortex, and the the question is where do they arrive at? Because we're not hard coding everything in. Where uh, well, well, in terms of if you build the neocortex equivalent, it will not have any of these desires or emotional states. Now you can argue that that neocortex won't be useful unless I give it some agency, unless I give it some desire, unless I give it some motivation. Otherwise, you'll be just lazy and do nothing. Right, you could argue that, um, but on its own, it's not going to do those things. It's just not. It's just not going to sit there and say, "I understand the world, therefore I care to live." No, it's not going to do that. It's just going to say, "I understand the world." Why is that obvious to you? Why? Uh, why? Why don't? Because, do you think it's po okay? Let me ask it this way: yeah. Do you think it's possible it will at least uh, assign to itself um, agency and um, perceive itself? in this world as being a conscious entity as a useful way to operate in the world and, and to make sense of the world. I think intelligent machine can be conscious, but that doesn't not, again, imply any of these um, these desires and goals and, mm -hmm. and that you're worried about. It uh, We can, I have a, we can talk about what it means for a machine to be conscious. Mm -hmm. but, and by the way, not worry about, but get excited about. It's not necessarily that we should worry no, about it. So I think there's a <laughs> legitimate problem or not problem a question they ask if you build this modeling system what's it going to model yes right what's it what's its desire yeah. what is what's its goal what are we applying it to mm -hmm. right so that's an interesting question um one thing if it and it depends on the application it's not something that inherent to the modeling system it's something we apply to the modeling system in a particular way so if i wanted to make a really smart car it would have to know about driving in cars and what's important in driving in cars. Mm -hmm. It's not going to figure that out on its own. It's not going to sit there and say, you know, I've understood the world and I've decided, you know, no, 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 no. We're going to have to tell it. We're going to have to say like, so I imagine I make this car really smart. It learns about your driving habits. It learns about the world. And it's just, you know, is it one day going to wake up and say, you know what? I'm tired of driving and doing what you want. I think I have better ideas about how to spend my time. Well, okay. I'm no, a, it's not going to do that. Well, part of me is playing a little bit of devil's advocate, but part that. of me is also trying to think through this because uh, I've studied cars quite a bit and I've studied pedestrians and cyclists quite a bit. And there's part of me that thinks that there needs to be um, more intelligence than we realize in order to drive successfully. Uh, the, that game theory of human interaction seems to require some deep understanding of the um, of human nature that okay when a pedestrian crosses the street there's some sense they they look at a car usually and then they look away there's some sense in which they say i believe that you're not going to murder me you don't have the guts to murder me this is the little dance of pedestrian yeah. car interaction yeah. is saying, I'm gonna look away and I'm gonna put my life in your hands because I think you're human, you're not gonna kill me. And then the car, in order to successfully operate in like Manhattan streets, has to say, no, 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 no. I am going to kill you, yeah. like a little bit. There's a little yeah. bit of this right. weird inkling of yeah. mutual murder yeah, 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 yeah. and that's a dance and yeah. we somehow successfully operate so, through did that. We, do you think you were born of that or did you learn that social interaction? Uh, th I think it, it might have a lot of the same elements that you're talking about, which is we're leveraging things we were born with and applying them in the context that- uh, All right, I would, I would have answered that. I would have said that that kind of interaction is learned. 
Because, you know, people in different cultures have different interactions like that. If you cross the street in different cities and different around the world, they have different ways of interacting. I would say that's learned. And I would say an intelligence system can learn that too. But that does not lead, and the intelligence system can understand humans. It could understand that, you know, just like I can study an animal and, and learn something about that animal. You know, I could study apes and learn something about their culture and so on. I don't have to be an ape to know that. Um, I may not be completely, but I can understand something. So intelligence machine can model that. That's just part of the world. It's just part of the interactions. The question we're trying to get at, will the intelligent machine have its own personal agency that's beyond, you know, what we assign to it or its, its own personal, you know, goals or will it mm -hmm. evolve and create these things? My confidence comes from understanding the mechanisms I'm talking about creating. Mm -hmm. This is not hand wavy stuff. It's down in the details. We, I, I'm going to build it and I know what it's going to look like and I know what's it going to behave. I know what the kind of things it could do and the kind of things it can't do. Just like when I build a computer, I know it's not going to on its own decide to put another register inside of it. It can't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's no way. No matter what your software does, it can't add a register to the computer. Um, so in this way, when we build AI systems, we have to make choices about the 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 the, under, the how we embed them. Mm -hmm. So I talk about this in the book. I said, you know, it's a brain, intelligence system is not just the neocortex equivalent. Mm -hmm. You have to have that, but it has to have some kind of embodiment, physical or virtual. It has to have some sort of goals. It has to have some sort of uh, ideas about dangers, about things it shouldn't do. Like, you know, like we 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 build in safeguards into systems. Uh, we have them in our bodies. We have put them into cars. Right, you know, my car follows my directions until the day it sees I'm about to hit something, and it ignores my directions and puts the brakes on. Mm -hmm. So we can build those things in. So that's a very interesting problem: um, how to build those in. I think my 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 differing opinion about the risks of AI for most people is that people assume that somehow those things will just appear automatically and it'll evolve, and intelligence itself begets that stuff or requires it. But it's not. Intelligence of the neocortex equipment doesn't require this. The neocortex equipment just says, I'm a learning system. Tell me what you want me to learn. And I'll tell you, and ask me questions. And I'll tell you the answers. But in, in that, again, it's again, like a map. It doesn't, a map has no intent about things, but you can use it um, to solve problems. Okay. So the building, engineering the neocortex in itself is just creating an intelligent prediction system. Modeling system. Model, yes. uh, sorry, modeling system. Yeah, uh, you can use it to then make predictions, and then, um, but you can also put it inside a, a thing that's actually acting in this world. It has, you have to put it inside something. It's again, think of the map analogy, right? A map on its own doesn't do anything, right? It's, it's just inert. It's just it can learn, but it's just inert. So we have to embed it somehow in something to do something. 